So finally, I just want to briefly talk about selecting the value lambda. So we saw in the two extremes, as lambda goes to infinity, our ridge regression solution will be a vector of zeros. In the other extreme, as lambda goes to zero, we get the least square solution back. So how do we select lambda? And I'll talk uh, in more detail about these types of problems later. Here I just want to give a, a very simple heuristic with not so much justification, something that you can calculate using all of the data that you have um, very easily uh, by basically giving a trace of the solution as a function of lambda. So this isn't even necessarily a way to pick lambda. It's a way to understand how lambda changes our least squares solution or our, our regularized least squares uh, ridge regression solution. So this is um, this is something called the degrees of freedom. So in this case, um, what we're going to do is we're going to, as a function of lambda, calculate uh, the number of degrees of freedom in our solution. And so this is equal to the trace of this uh, matrix here, which is equal equivalently equal to the sum of a among uh, the sum of the singular of for each of the d singular values of the singular value the i singular value squared divided by uh, lambda plus the i singular value squared and then sum that over the singular values so if you'll recall from a previous slide that's simply equal to the trace of this matrix m this number of degrees of freedom is simply for plotting purposes and so what you'll see is that in the extreme, as the number of degrees of freedom equals zero, that's equivalent to saying lambda is equal to infinity, because then you have z this term is equal to zero for each i, and then the sum over i is equal to zero. So the number of degrees of freedom as lambda goes to infinity uh, is equal to zero. So that's one extreme. And then as lambda goes to zero, so in the, in, the extreme, in the limit, as lambda goes to 0, this term is equal to 1. And so the sum from i equals 1 to d of 1 is equal to d. And so then in the other extreme, as lambda goes to 0, the number of degrees of freedom is equal to d, which is the dimensionality of the problem. So in this example on the right, we have a problem that's originally eight dimensions, meaning that the vector x is eight dimensional. So we have eight different inputs. Um, for example, age could be an input, weight could, could be an input among other possible measurements uh, that we make as inputs. And so when we plot the, uh, and so what we're showing here is a plot of the weight vector w as a function of the degrees of freedom. So for example, let's imagine that, um, that age is the first dimension uh, of our data, x. So the weight for w1 is the weight that we associate with the age of the person in making our prediction of some output. And so what this is showing is as a function of degrees of freedom, what is the weight for the, first, for the uh, ridge regression solution for the first dimension? which corresponds to age in this example. So again, what we're doing here is we're starting lambda at 0. And we're letting lambda blow up to infinity as we go here, to, as we move along the axis to the left. So as the number of degrees of freedom goes to 0, lambda is going to infinity. And so what we have here, for example, in this slice, is one particular value of lambda that gives the number of degrees of freedom roughly 5. So this corresponds to a particular value of lambda. And what you can then do is read off the eight values in the vector w uh, for this particular value of lambda. And so what you can see here is that very clearly the solution fundamentally changes as lambda goes from 0 to infinity. For example, for a particular lambda here, then the, then the weight that we associate with age is positive. So for this lambda, this value of lambda, we're saying that as age increases, we expect whatever response we're measuring to increase. Whereas as we decrease lambda 
say here towards zero, so this would be a large value, this would be a small value, then the age is a negative weight. And so in this case, we're saying that increasing age decreases the corresponding output. So we're, we're saying that the age of the person in this example fundamentally changes. The relationship of the age to the output fundamentally changes as two different, for two, these two different values of lambda. And so what's making up the slack is the weights that we associate with everything else. And so here, as, as you can see, as lambda goes to infinity, all the weights are going to zero. We get a zero vector. And as lambda goes to zero, in this case, we get degrees of freedom equal to eight, because we have eight covariates. Then the weights correspond to the least square solution. And then we have a sweep of all values in between uh, as a function of lambda.